Hi, I'm Alex. If you're new here, welcome. If not, welcome back. Today is July 31st and for the first time since October of 2022, we are going to be doing a monthly reset. Um, I do this for myself every month, but I feel like in the fall, I sort of fell out of like setting goals and stuff, mostly because we had just bought a house, we were about to move, everything was sort of crazy. Um, and I think I had taken like 21 out of like 35 days off of work or something. And we were just like on one. So there was no point in really like resetting um, anything because it just wasn't going to happen anyways. So we're here now. And we, I think I have perfected my monthly reset routine, um, which is really excited, ex which is really exciting. And I am very excited to share it with you because um, I think it's pretty good. We're also swapping from my planner for last year. Um, the ability to use this ended yesterday. There is no July 31st in here. So we officially have to switch to the new planner. Um, for those of you wondering, I am an Erin Condren girly till the day I die. I was in college and getting like a 3.0 GPA, which is not awful by any means, but for me, Little Miss straight A student, high school valedictorian, um, that wasn't what I wanted out of college. And once I got my Erin Condren planner, and this sounds like an ad, it's really not, but once I got my Erin Condren planner, I genuinely like started getting 3.8, 3.9, 4.0. Like my GPA was so much better. My grades were so much better. And is that about the Aaron Condren planner? Probably not. But in my head, is that now associated with me being successful? Yes. So here we go. Okay, hopefully that's a good thumbnail, but here we go. Let's get in to this August reset. Okay, so every month I've been setting up one of these trackers, which along the top has habits that I wanna track and then little boxes to color them in. And then over here, there's a mood tracker, which I just love like how colorful it looks. I have my like reading page tracker, which I obviously haven't finished filling in for this month. A little calendar with any events that are going on and my daily gratitude every day to go with my habit tracker. So that was July's. I did already set up the one for the month of August. It is orange and green. Um, and we have, I haven't filled this out, obviously. There's no like habits in here to track. All I've done so far is set this up. So that's where we're starting. The other thing I've been doing every month that I will set up is I put my goals in my planner my TBR for the month in my planner. And then on this top half, I do the books that I read and um, the habits I wanna track. This is where I keep that like paper is in this like layout. And then I have a reading tracker in here as well where I always keep a sticky note of what page I like started on, of what book I'm reading. Um, that way I can track it. And then normally I have my bills down here, but I didn't do that last month because we were going on vacation and it just wasn't the vibe. So for my TBR this month, I did a random number generator to use my TBR. They're all back here. I uh, thought we could start there just because it is the first thing that gets entered into my planner. So if you missed that video, here is a wrap up of my TBR for this month. So we have When in Rome by Sarah Adams. The Sinful Lives of Trophy Wives by Kristen Miller. If He Had Been With Me by Lauren Allen. The Makeup Test by Jenny Howe. The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. None Shall Sleep by Ellie Marnie. Set On You by Amy Leah. Frat Girl by Kylie Roche. And Not The Plan by Gia de Cadenet. Um Last month in July, I finished my TBR for the first time ever in my life. Ever in my life, I finished it last month. Um, it was extremely exciting to me. I did not think it was going to happen, but I did. Um, so my goal now is to do that again this month, but with all books off of my physical TBR, um, that way I can reduce the number of books that are 
on my physical TBR. So I am going to add that TBR into my planner and then we will move on to the next step. I just opened this to August for the first time and this month is so pretty in here. I'm so excited to use it. This is what the like main page looks like. I feel like the lighting is not doing it justice, but it's very pretty. I really honestly hate the tripod I'm using right now. I wish I could find my better one, but I I think it's in my car. I don't know. Anyways, the TBR is done. So the next thing I'm going to do is some goal setting for the month, and I tend to stick to the same... I would say formula for goals and I honestly have set the same goals like month after month for the last few months so I think this is the month that we're going to set them and we are going to be determined to finish them so here is what we're going to go with I think our first goal is going to be to read 10 books it's always the goal this month as you know the goal is to finish the TBR but we're not putting it in the goal section, just in case. I'm gonna add to read two nonfiction books. Um, I've been trying to read more nonfiction lately. Um, a lot of it is like memoirs, and I actually, my hold for um, Paris, the Paris Hilton story, um, narrated by Paris Hilton, should be done soon, so I'm really excited for that this month. It's something I'm really looking forward to. Another one of my overall goals for the year was to try a lot of new recipes and to kind of like fall in love with cooking, I guess. Um, we do a lot of eating out and I am trying to end that. So the third goal for this month is to try three new recipes, um, which is pretty typical for me. And then another thing, if you haven't noticed, I've been pretty inconsistent with YouTube. Some weeks I upload two to three videos some months I only upload one. So um, one of my goals for the month is to post four YouTube videos, whether that be one a week or two, one week to another, I don't know. Um, but I do, I do really want to post four because last month I missed this mark and only got up three. The next thing, this has been on my to-do list since Feb, not February, that would be dramatic. Since May, we need to send our wedding thank yous. We got married on April 1st. We have filled out the envelopes for all of the thank you cards, addressed them all. Um, we went and got like pictures printed with everybody who came to our wedding so we could send them a photo from the day. Um, and yeah, we just need to mail them now or what well, we need to write in them and then mail them. So sending our wedding thank yous is 100% gonna be here on here for August and it better not be here again in September, okay? It, it better not. It needs to get done this month. So put on that. The next one I put on here fairly regularly and it's to make X dollars in extra income, whether this be driving Instacart or finding an idea to sell something or I have a book, a book, a pile back here of like unhaul books um, that I want to sell. So anything in that nature, I think the goal this month is going to be $500 in extra income because other than one weekend trip, we don't have a lot going on. Um, although we might add one more beach trip for the summer, so we will, we will see. We were talking about it yesterday, um, but we need to figure that out. So my husband's like family has a beach house in Jersey. The next one, um, last month, I always make some kind of fitness goal. And last month that fitness goal was to walk 100 miles. And I actually think that I did achieve it. I didn't, I haven't added it up now um but when i added it up last week i was like 10 or 12 miles away and we went on a couple of big walks this weekend um so i'm sure that by the end of today i will have hit that i don't know what i'm going to do for my fitness goal next month um i have a peloton in my office and it had a recall so maybe i'll set the goal of getting my peloton fixed in august that way 
um, in either September or October, I can do like a 30 rides in 30 days video. So that's going to be the goal is to get my Peloton fixed. Um, this next one has been on here since January when we moved into our new house. It's to develop a daily routine. I think that last week I had a day where I experienced what my ideal morning looks like before going to work and I would just like to be able to recreate that all the time and to me that is like getting up spending a little bit of time cleaning up I think that day I did like dishes and swapped a load of laundry or something and then getting myself very minimally ready the same way I am today so a little bit of something done to my hair so it doesn't look like you're rolled out of bed so I'm like skincare and maybe mascara if I'm feeling it, but not always. So I think that now that that is like developed in my brain, I would now like to stick to it this month. So I think it's going, the goal for this is going to be to stick to a daily routine. The next one I have on here every month is to drink 80 ounces of water every day. I literally never achieved this. Literally never. Um, I used to be so good about drinking water. I guess I haven't achieved it since probably March or April. It's just been a few months. My like Stanley Cup got stolen and then I got a new one and I just, in the time in between my cup getting stolen and getting a new one, I completely lost the habit, um, which sucks. So. Drinking 80 ounces of water daily is definitely going to be the next goal on my list. And then the last one has been sort of new in the last few months, which is to spend, or the last, I guess the first time I did it was in July, but it's to spend a, under $100 on books. So this means that if there's a new release, I can go get it without being too like restrictive, but I'm not going to go on a full like book haul, like let's buy 30 books. So spending a hundred dollars on books is going to be my last goal for the month okay the next step is filling out my habit tracker and i do almost the same goals every month but or the same habits every month but adjust them a little bit based on my goals so i think this month we're going to keep some of the same things so i usually track waking up at six um which i almost never do and it's bad because i leave for work at seven Doing my skincare, which I've gotten much better at, which I'm proud of. Um, moving my body, so working out in some way, even if it's just going for a walk. Um, doing my daily gratitude. Uh, sometimes I do one line a day instead of daily gratitude, but I find that daily gratitude starts me off better for the day. Um, I finish a book. I love seeing this, although it's annoying when you finish two in the same day and then you can't like tell. So there's one on here um, that last month you can see we did cook all meals and it is not crossed off a single time. Not one. We're really bad at that. So sometimes we do cook two thirds of our meals, but I really am like determined to figure out how to cook all of our meals. So I'm going to put cook all meals on. Last month I put, or the last couple of months I've done work on side hustle as one of the goals, but I don't really love that as, or as one of the habits. I don't really love it as being like a habit to track, so I don't think I'm going to put it on here. So I'm going to have to brainstorm what to put in its place. But next, as you heard me talk about my goals, drinking 80 ounces of water is a huge goal for me. So I'll put that on there. Um... You know what? I have an idea. Finishing my to-do list is always a goal of mine. Do I do this? No, but I'm going to try. Um, and then the last one, we're going to track no spends this month, which is really hard for me to achieve because I suck and have no self-control. But this month, we're doing it. So we're putting no spend and then also bed before midnight um, is another goal I track almost every month. So I think these are pretty good habits to track. Um, I f try to organize them from when I like wake up to when I go to bed basically. So 
I also have them based on my like ideal morning routine. So like waking up at six, doing my skincare, leaving the house, moving my body, doing my daily gratitude. I usually do it when I get to work. Um, finish a book. And so those are the ones that my, and ideally I would have done before I like sit down to do my daily gratitude for the day in the morning. And then the rest are things to check in in the evening. So did I finish a book? Did I cook all my meals? Did I drink 80 ounces of water? Did I finish my to-do list? Did I do a no spend? And was I in bed before midnight? So I think this is gonna be a good month of habit tracking. I would love to see a grid entirely filled out one month, but obviously with no spend being on here with like groceries and gas, that's simply not gonna be an option. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Normally this point in the video is where I would discuss my like budget and my bullet journal for the month. Um, but to be completely honest, I haven't touched my bullet journal since probably the last time I filmed one of these videos. And um, we're in the process of figuring out budget stuff. After our wedding, things just kind of like went to the wall. So we are working on it, but I'm probably not going to talk about it today um, just because they're not like sorted in a way that's going to be helpful for anyone, including myself. So I think to wrap up this video, we're just going to do a little book uh, reading wrap up from the month of July. Um, it was a really good reading month. Like I said, I finished my TBR for the first time ever, which was really exciting. Um, so let me grab the books that I read and then we will go over those. Okay, here's my lovely pile of books from last month. This isn't all of them. There were a few that I read on my Kindle, um, but I'll go over those too. I had I had a mediocre reading month for me and you're gonna see how many books I read and be like shut up but <laughs> um, we went on vacation and honestly did not read a single word on our trip so um, yeah it's probably like three or four books lower than it could have been which is what like hurts me but you know what everything is fine the monitor was distracting me um, let's go through the books Starting at the top, I did a reread of The Summer I Turned Pretty um, just before the show came out and I rated it four stars, which is also what I rated the first time I read it. Um, next book I read was a Kindle read, so let me hold this up, um, was Hellbent by Leigh Bardugo. It's the second book to Ninth House and I loved it. I rated it four and a half stars, but I still think about it. I know the next book's probably not going to come out for like two years, um, but I loved it and I'm so excited to see what happens next. I can't really talk about what it's about without spoiling the end of Ninth House, um, but it's so good. Also, it's a book that I am probably never going to own a physical copy of because I hate the cover. Look at it. Isn't it terrifying? I will not, I will not, no. <laughs> Next book, I did a reread of It's Not Summer Without You. Obviously, season two is coming out. I had to read this too. Um, rated it four stars, just like the first. And then also, We'll Always Have Summer, of course. And I'm actually glad I read this because I feel like they're pulling from seasons two and three to create season two, or from books two and three to create season two of the show. Uh, I also know Jenny Han said that it might not end the same way as the book, which I, I don't know. I think it just means that uh, she's gonna end up with Conrad now instead of later, but I guess we'll see where it goes. Next book I read was A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. Um, I rated this three and a half stars. This is about a girl who, um, her dad was arrested for being a serial killer and like 20 years later, girls start going missing in the same exact way. And she's like, what the heck? My dad's been arrested, what is happening? Um, it's pretty wild. Uh, it wasn't my favorite, but I thought it was okay. I would recommend reading it for sure, um, but it wasn't like a top-notch thriller for me. Now the next book I read, and August was a really good reading month in the fact that I had five three-star reads. Five! I usually have zero. How did I start? No. Reverse that. 
three five-star reads. I usually have zero, so it was a big reading month for me. And the first of those was Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. I died laughing reading this book. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so funny. I think it's my favorite of the Allie Hazelwood books. I do love The Love Hypothesis, but the amount of Olive and... What is his name? Is his name Adam, right? Yeah, okay. The amount of Olive and Adam that you get in this book I think is the perfect amount to like beat out the love hypothesis for me. Also, the references to um, Love on the Brain I loved. I just, I thought this was so good. I'm so happy that I got to read it and I honestly already want to reread it. I love Ellie Hazelwood so much. The next book I read, I also don't have a physical copy of, is The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. And I actually bought a physical copy of this on eBay and returned it because it was in such bad condition, even though it said it was like new and very good. Whatever. Um, the Bodyguard by Catherine Center. I rated this four stars. It's about a um, guy who is famous and needs a bodyguard um, to go home with him while his mom is sick. And... Yeah, it's much more than that, um, but I feel like that's how everybody describes it, to not spoil it, so yes. The next book I read I also don't have a physical copy of, but it is Crown of Midnight, which is the second book to Throne of Glass. Um, I rated this three and a half stars, and it was gonna be three stars until like the last 20 pages. It really got me right in the end, um, made me like download Assassin's Blade immediately, and I was really excited to read it, um, but still have not gotten there because I wasn't that influenced. <laughs> now for my second five-star read of the month, The Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. She's quickly becoming one of my favorite authors. Um, I think I only have one book left by her to read, which is really sad to me, but I loved yours truly, okay? I loved it. But I still can't stop thinking about this book. I finished it on July 19th, so it's been, I guess, 12 days. But every day I'm like, oh, I wish I could be in Wakan. Um, like with the people in that town. Like, oh, like I wish I could go meet like one of the animals on the farm with a funny name. I think about this daily. Um, it's the most I think I've thought about a book since I read it. Maybe ever, honestly. Um, well, there's one more in this video, but I loved this. I thought it was incredible, and I definitely can see myself picking this up again to annotate it because I didn't get to the first time, so we'll see, but I loved this. The next book I read this month, inspired by Larry Reed's, was The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I actually preferred this to The Inheritance Games, which I think a lot of people would not, although I did rate it lower than I did The Inheritance Games. I rated it three and a half stars. Um, it's about a group of like high schoolers um, who get taken in by the FBI um, to help the BAU if you're a Criminal Minds fan, um, Criminal Minds fan, helping them identify serial killers from cold cases. So I thought this book was good. I'm excited to read the second one, but I wasn't like, OMG, five stars, you know? You know. The next book I read was actually a novella, and it is Stuck With You by Allie Hazelwood, and it finished off Loathe to Love You for me, so I've been waiting <laughs> to talk about this until we got here. So Loathe to Love You is Under One Roof, Stuck With You, and Below Zero. I think my favorite one is Under One Roof, where this girl has, like, she gets broken up with, and she has to move in with her brother, and her brother's roommate is, like, I don't know, someone she's never really liked, and obviously horse proximity, they fall in love. But that one was my favorite of the novellas. Um, this month I read Stuck With You. As I said, I rated it three stars as I did with all the other novellas. And it's about a girl who gets stuck in an elevator with a guy that she like had a thing with and then it like ended out of nowhere and obviously all miscommunication. But um, I thought it was pretty good. So there is that. Next book I read this month was the Legacy by L. Kennedy. Um, this is the fifth book 
in the off-campus series and this kind of wraps up the stories of the couples in the other four books. So it's told in four parts. It felt like reading three novellas put together um, but it's told in four parts. One for each couple. Um, saving Hannah and Garrett for last obviously because everybody loves them the most. Um, I rated this four stars. I was expecting it to be out of this world. Absolutely loved it for me and it didn't hit that mark but um, I don't know. I liked it a lot. The next book on here, and you can already see it, probably the most exciting, is Fourth Ring. It was so good. Five stars, 100%. The dragons were my favorite characters. I cannot wait for Iron Flame to come out. I cannot shut up about this book. I make my husband read one, my favorite book from the year before, the year after, and I already know his book next year is going to be Fourth Ring, 100%. If it's not, then somebody has taken over my body because it needs to be this. My camera battery is flashing but I am determined to finish this. Um, next I read Romantic Comedy by Curtis Seinfeld. I read it at three stars. If you're looking for a story that's behind the scenes of SNL, watch 30 Rock. It's very funny. Um, romantic Comedy like goes into pandemic stuff and becomes real life and a little depressing which is not fun. Um, the next book I finished was The Summer of Broken Rules by Kale Wather. I rated this four and a half stars. I loved it. Um, I thought it was a fun little YA summer read. And the last book I read was Nora Goes Off Script by Abigail Monaghan. Um, I think... I, I can't speak. I think this book was pretty good. I rated it three and a half stars. I thought it was entertaining, um, but it was fairly similar to the Happy Ever After playlist in terms of story, and I just thought that that one was a little bit better to me. And then last, the book I am currently in the middle of is Misdemeanor by Eleanor Lippmann. Um, this book is pretty good so far. We'll see how I rate it. It's definitely not going to be a five-star read, but I probably will finish it by the end of the day. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.